right well I've got another project on the go and uh, before you worry about the camera angle my octopod snapped today so I'll need to come up with a better one fairly soon uh, second point uh, if my voice sounds a bit funny it's because it's uh, that time of year when everybody gets crook and my apprentice decided to bring home some illness anyway what are we doing today well I'll grab something from over the back here I have been playing with one of these cheap uh, MIDI to USB adapters and uh, safest to say I'm not really impressed so I had a bit of a look around I did some research and I dug out an old AT Mega that I've got sitting around this one's been stacked a bit improperly has a couple of bent pins nothing we can't fix so the plan here being as there's some serial ports involved in this uh, that can do the data rate required for MIDI signal processing and have a USB lead I'm pretty sure there's some firmware out there in fact I know there's some firmware out there because I've just researched it that will let me use this as a USB to MIDI interface so um, let's get cracking okay well apologies if the lighting is not perfect here I'm dealing with some very dynamic lighting conditions but um, if we can get up close and personal here, you might see the pin header on the top here is bent. So just taking a spudger tool or whatever that's correctly determined to be. And I'm going to straighten these pins up. Just so that we don't have any accidental shorts and mucking around. Okay, now to get our lead unwrapped and plugged in and see if we can program this up all right let's uh, fire this up right here according to this I'm supposed to hit the reset button here and uh, configure it to receive some new firmware and it looks like that's going to do the job nicely it's in the correct mode if I just go back and Reset. I don't think the program on there is meant to make it flash. That would appear not. Right, let's dig up some firmware. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get this into DFU mode. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need to bridge two pins here and then uh, shortly after, two pins on this JP5 here. Um, to make my life a little easier, I'm going to solder a pin header in there. So uh, let's get that inserted. Now the camera angle may drift slightly while I'm doing this um, because my normal tripod is out of action as you may recall. It's our pin header installed there. It's a little wonky but that doesn't matter. Um, I can probably just give that a quick little reheat and a straighten up. We'll just... This can be tricky. Sorry about the camera work guys. That's a quick little straighten there. Um, it will do the job for what we need. Um, it doesn't have to look pretty. All right, let's get these jumpers on. The tutorial I'm working with requires me to uh, plug the unit in and then short this guy um, and briefly touch this one, disconnect and disconnect that one. And it looks like it's setting up a new device. So let's have a look, see what device it's picked up. Okay, well, Windows 10 reports an unknown device that's popped up, and I think that's in keeping with what happens when it detects it in DFU mode. So uh, let's see if I can add some drivers. If I've done this right, I should be able to find the drivers in the flip software or the flipped programming software directory. Uh, so let's have it have a look through here and see if we can find it. I think this is what it reckons. Do that folder here and see if we can find drivers. And indeed it has. Okay, let's do it even though they're not signed. Okay, AT Mega 16U2. That's what we would expect if we had it in DFU mode. So let's get the flip software running. Right, so Device Manager reports this as an AT Mega 16U2. We'll go over to the Atmel Flip software and load AT16U2. 
Right, and from here I think we need to select our file. This is where I need to do a bit more reading. All right, so I went from, went to uh, File and then Load Hex File. Now I'm loading the Dart USB MIDI Hex File. Um, I'll try and include a link to the tutorial I'm using here um, in the description. So let's get this loaded up. All right, I got this figured out for one simple little step here. We have Select EEPROM or Select Flash. Uh, we needed to be programming the Flash here not the EEPROM, that's why it wasn't going through. So if we have the EEPROM selected and we go check our flash, we have our hex file loaded and we hit run, everything goes through and goes correctly. So let's restart and see what happens. Right, we're going to again pull the power and then whoop, plug back in here. Okay, so it's picked up a new device, and it's going, we're setting up the device Dart. So let's bring up the device manager, and I'll find it up here out of the way. It should come up in a device manager shortly. Where are we? It's doing a few things in the corner here. Um, it should come up in a MIDI controller or something. We'll find it. I'll find it, and we'll be back. All right, it was hiding away under software devices. We now see Dart coming up, two of them. I'm guessing that's for uh, MIDI in and MIDI out. Um, it's interesting that it's popped up in the same place as the Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. So that tells me I need to go and find my CoolSoft MIDI selector and see if it's come up. And lo and behold, it's coming up as a MIDI device. That's very, very nice. Okay, so, um, Let's figure out which pins I need to hook these leads up, and I'm going to rob the leads off the old unit. But uh, before I do that, we might just play a little bit of a known MIDI track um, through the existing controller and see how wrong it gets at first. Alright, I'll apologise ahead of time. I am not equipped to do high quality line in recordings. be enough to get the idea so uh, we'll have a comparison now for when we do the other one. Among some other issues I'm experiencing with this cheap unit and this is the whole inspiration behind this is it's not mapping the outputs correctly. Let's uh, demonstrate. And now there's no way to stop this other than to reset it. Sorry about that high-pitched noise. You can understand the annoying side of this. It also doesn't map anything from here down. So uh, that makes it pretty useless as a MIDI controller and uh, I've read plenty of articles where they say add an optocoupler or add a resistor and it still doesn't do sysx messages as well. So. We're just going to eliminate that whole thing. We're just going to chop the leads off that and hook them up to our Arduino. So I've run into an interesting conundrum here. There's only two wires going up each connector and a poorly cut off ground. I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm going to have to map these pins now. Well, the beeping you can hear is my apprentice who's decided to help us test these leads. Okay. Now. <coughs> I need you to touch the metal bit. I know, you kept it home from kinder today, didn't we? Alright. need to test the shields on these leads. Okay. Can you test that? It's not beeping. Which one's beeping? Okay, try the ground. No, that's not working right. What about this one? No. It's connected right, is it? We'll try this again and we'll get back to you with a pin out. Apprentice has decided that the 
old MIDI unit is actually worth reviving. So while she's working on reassembling that, um, I've been metering these leads and discovered that the shields actually don't go anywhere. They're not connected to the ground or any of those pins. I've only got these two. Um, and my apprentice is getting frustrated much like I was with the unit. So, um, I think we, we do have a problem, yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a little bit more homework. Um, I have the breadboard diagram here, and we'll see how we go with that. I'm currently playing a MIDI file through this, and we can see the RX data is flashing, and it should be transmitting out through that blue wire. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, basically, we're trying to drive an optocoupler at the other end of the receiving device to start with, um, and that is in essence an LED. So on the output of the original controller here, I've just shoved an LED. I'm about to start playing some music. So we can see here that it's flashing that for the serial data. That's exactly what we want to see. Now I've located the two pins I need to on the Arduino here, but I'm not getting the same result. So I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Okay, we have another little quick test set up. This is the original controller um, hooked up straight into the back of the keyboard. Now the exercise in this is to see if this is additional extra 220 ohm resistor is gonna cause a problem. And I don't believe it will, but let's try anyway. So it's accepting inputs just nicely. So that's gonna be fine. One more step. So what that now means is I have to find some serial data coming out of my Arduino, which considering I can get the RXD light flashing, it tells me I should be able to pick it up somewhere else on the board. All right, I did a little bit of probing and mucked around and found that right here where we're looking, that's the RX pin, not the TX pin. And this silly little diagram here, which is behind Winamp, is telling me that I should have actually connected the MIDI out <laughs> to the TX pin, which would make logical sense, but I think because I'm using, instead of a Nano, I'm using an AT Mega, something's different in the firmware. Either way, let's get Winamp crank in here and play our sample song. And I have a test LED in here to tell me when the data's working. Let's turn this up as an example. to run before I put everything together, largely because I have to wait for some opto couplers before I can do MIDI in. But um, we see here I have the, this is DOSBox um, configuration, and I'm about to run um, Tyrion and see if I can get some music running through that. Uh, and you see here I've got it set as a default MIDI device, but MIDI device position number three, which corresponds to the Dart. So now let's get DOSBox running and we'll have um, Tyrion's music box in the setup running. Alright, we have DOSBox running with the Tyrion jukebox. And this sounds a little bit more like what I would expect. There's something really up with the mapping on the old one. Let's try a few different ones. all sounding better. Alright, at this point now that things are working relatively well, I found and recycled a little bit of old prototyping board and I found a relay card here that has an optocoupler in it that I can use, uh, being as it's like 8 o'clock at night and uh, I'm penniless so 
I've got a steel and opto coupler off a board I'm not using. So uh, let's get cracking. Now, for reference, this little crude diagram here is what I ended up with. Um, I'm actually uh, getting data out on RX out, um, going through a 220 ohm resistor, going up to the red wire for some reason, um, which is the MIDI out negative, uh, which corresponds to the pin 5 on the MIDI DIN plug. Um, my plus 5 volts is going straight through up to the MIDI out plus wire, which is current, coincidentally black. Um, but that goes to pin 4. Um, pretty much all we need is this 220 ohm resistor in to limit the current through the opto coupler, which is basically an LED and a photo transistor in a little package. Uh, much like over here, this little tiny dude that I've just ripped off a relay board. So uh, we will need one of those guys for the uh, input side to isolate it so we don't get a ground loop, uh, just to make it MIDI compliant. So, uh, all right, here goes nothing. All right, now the time has come for MIDI output. We can follow these leads up to the MIDI out on the back of the keyboard. Um, we have here, next to my finger here, an opto coupler. Um, and on this side of it, it's basically an LED. So we have a normal LED in parallel with it, just to determine that we've got everything right. Now crucial to note if I have this LED backwards um, in respect to the diode side of the optocoupler it'll create a dead short and this LED won't flash so it's a good little indicator that we have it right well let's hit a few keys on this keyboard after I turn the volume up we'll see what happens if I go something a little more complicated or if I do rapid keys All right, that's definitely outputting some data. So let's see if we can interface this. Okay, next step in the breadboarding phase. So we have here these two, this is coming out from MIDI out, and it's going through a bunch of clip leads here. Now our MIDI out from our keyboard is entering in here. We have a 220 ohm resistor in series with the opto coupler input. Passing out the other side, we have our 5 volts coming in on this white wire, passing through an LED, through a 390 ohm resistor, and then back off to ground. And we can see here that I have the Keep Alive signal. If I push a few keys on the keyboard over here, we get, we get some flashes of data. That's good. Now to get the input working. Okay, so I've stripped off all the input circuit and now what we have happening, uh, we have a 5 volt coming across here through our diode or LED, through a 390 ohm resistor, through our opto coupler, back out to our MIDI input and then we have a, I think this is about a 6.8k resistor, it's all I had that's pulling it back down to ground and this line here is connecting our ground to a common ground rail here so when we type this or push a key we occasionally get a little flash on the TX so what I might do here is I might just bypass that diode and see what happens okay let's try now with the LED bypassed I'm getting input commands okay let's see if I can get this actually uh, relaying it through to the computer I'm watching this little orange light very closely this is the MIDI traffic indicator if I push some buttons it goes green which means the computer is getting MIDI messages through now to make it do something with it Okay, so I've been playing with this for a while. While I can get some traffic happening through, my MIDI monitor doesn't really tell me that much is happening. There's no real traffic going through, so I suspect um, that probably the value of these two resistors is not quite right. Um, 
considering I've used bits and pieces I had laying around, that's not surprising. So I think it's a trip in the morning for a few new resistors. Okay, well it's about lunchtime the next day. And uh, I sent an email off last night um, to the developers of the Dart firmware. They've actually got a really nice product you should really check out. Um, that being said, this is not a product placement. This is just my personal opinion. Um, they got back to me fairly quickly with an email saying that their firmware is not tested on the... or either it's not tested or it's not ready for the AT Mega 2560. So um, I am going to persevere a little bit more with this. But I went down to see my friendly fellow at my local J-Car shop, and he gave me an Uno. Um, or rather, he booked it up to my account, along with some correct value resistors. Uh, and I think the opto-coupler I've got is going to work just fine, so I'm going to try and sort this out. He, uh, my J-Car guy, he didn't have uh, the correct opto-couplers I'm looking for, but I think the one I've got will do the job just nicely. So uh, let's see what we can get out of this. Alright, so the lighting's a little bit uh, hellish at the moment, but uh, we're going to try with the Arduino Uno as opposed to the AT Mega and uh, see if we can get that into programming mode as well. So I've soldered in another little uh, header here as well, just as I did with the Mega. And uh, if I can work out which way this is going to go in, I'll plug you in. Now I have a switch on my hub, so let's switch on. Now we'll short you out. And then we'll go touch on that and then disconnect that and let's see if it comes up okay let's check our device manager okay so it's come up is an AT Mega 16U2 okay that's what we wanted okay we're going to check that we've got the correct chip we have an AT Mega 16U2 uh, we're going to select device on the USB that showed up and this time we wanted to select flash, which we've got. Um, we need to go to um, somewhere up here, load a hex file. Um, it should hopefully remember the position of the last one, which is that. Oh, that's the one we want. Okay, and now we're going to include a blank check and we're going to run. Okay, that appears to have been done properly this time. Let's start the application. It's disconnected. And I'm waiting for that reconnecting sound. I haven't heard it reconnect, but uh, I'll check my list of stuff. Okie dokie, after a power cycle, it's showing up as the Dart. That's good. Let's just plug in some stuff and see what happens. Okay, MIDI out seems to be working at least. But the same problem has occurred. The MIDI out is happening on the RX line, which their diagram up here, which you might be able to see, indicates that the MIDI out should be on the TX line. So it's a firmware issue, I think. We have this hooked up and connected again, and it's receiving a pulse from the MIDI out. But our same situation again. I'm not getting anything coming through here. And also, TX and RX are indeed backwards on this, so maybe it's my firmware. We have a little bit of action here. I've replaced the 6.8K resistor with a 10. That might be our difference. Let's see if we can get MIDI out through Fruity Loops. Well, I've managed to make a little temporary add-on board with some prototyping board here uh, and this will handle MIDI out. Uh, MIDI in at the moment is not working, uh, well it sort of is but not quite right and I've uh, contacted the developers of the firmware that I'm using they're not quite sure what's going on, they seem to think everything's quite fine so uh, I'm gonna call this quits for this video now until we um, get back from the developers and uh, I find out everything else that I need to do with it uh, once that's done, then I'll uh, I'll do a two-parter on this video. I'll make a second part. So for the moment, we have a functional uh, MIDI out device using an Arduino, using the Dart firmware. But um, we'll be back for this one. So I'll see you again soon.